بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما بعد إن شاء الله this is going to be the last lecture for today it's going to be delivered by our sheikh who has been coming here for a number of years with us and the name of the lecture is إذا رأيت وإذا سمعت if you were to see and if you were to hear and then it become clear what he means by that particular title. So without any further ado, فليتفضل مشكورا له. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. أما بعد. فقد مال الإسلام حياة المسلم وجعل حياة المسلم مليئة بالخير فيما يعود عليه في أمر دينه ودنياه وآخرته. بسم الله. The Sheikh began by praising Allah عز وجل and sending peace and blessings and salutations on our Nabi and Rasul صلى الله عليه وسلم. And then he said that the religion of Al Islam it has taken care of everything that the life of the Muslim is in need of. And this religion has filled or filled up the life of every Muslim with those things that are good, the things that will cause him to be benefited if he would just take it. Al Islam came to the people at a time where the people's lives were filled with confusion and was filled with things that they believed, a theology that they believed, and a mindset that they had that was confused. جعل الله إسلام العقيدة النقية الوحيدة الصافية عقيدة التوحيد وقال الله لا تتخذ إلهين اثنين إنما هو إله واحد فإياي فرحبون. He went on to say that Al Islam came to the people and in what they used to believe is that they were worshiping the sun, they were worshiping the moon, and they were worshiping all other sorts of idols, and other than that. And then Islam put them on a belief and on a path of aqidah, an aqidah that was naqiya. It was pure and unadulterated and unpolluted. Uh, an aqidah that was also without any blemish, and that is the tawheed of Allah. Allah said in the Quran, do not take two gods as worship along with Allah, but worship Allah by himself and let him be the one that you fear. Their life before Al-Islam, it was built upon, predicated upon, and it consists of as it relates to their money, gambling, usury, and also cheating and lying. And then Allah came and showed them the way to make money the correct way. And he said, Allah has made halal for them commerce, and he made riba haram. <laughs> During their time, they used to have revolutions. They used to be deeply indulged in lying. It was part and parcel, the life that they live, cheating. And then Al-Islam replaced all of that with a high level of existence in their manners. The point of all of that, what was mentioned, is that Al-Islam came and it totally, absolutely changed the lives of what the people used to know. 
and Islam brought to them, and in their new way of living, that which has already been mentioned. It pulled to them that which was khair and that which was beneficial. وكان مما أمر به الإسلام وحث عليه النظر والتفكر والاعتبار فيما يعيش الإنسان فيه وما يراه حوله. And from what Al Islam has commanded and instructed the people who are in this religion is that people should ponder and reflect and think and contemplate about what's going on around them. And there are many ayat in the Quran that command us and encourage us to think and to contemplate. Many of them, like the statement of Allah Ta'ala, and travel through the earth and reflect, unzur, unzuru, look at, look at what Allah has done. The Sheikh said that the looking here is not the looking where you just look like that. He said it is a looking where you consider and you deeply reflect and you ponder over what you're witnessing and seeing. فمثال على آيات النظر والاعتبار ما ذكره الله تعالى في سورة الغاشية أفلا ينظرون إلى الإبل كيف خلقت وإلى السماء كيف رفعت وإلى الجبال كيف نصبت وإلى الأرض كيف سطحت يقول بعض المفسرين أمروا إذا خرج الرجل من بيته ثم ركب بعيرة أن يتفكر في هذا البعير وفي كيفية خلقه فإذا رفع رأسه إلى السماء تفكر في تلك السماء العظيمة وإذا التفت يمنة أو يسرة وراء الجبال تفكر في هذه الجبال وإذا نظر إلى الأسفل تفكر في هذه الأرض كيف سطحت. And one of those ayat is the statement of the Quran in Surah Al-Ghashiya where Allah Ta'ala said do they not look at the camel how it was created and they do not do they not look at the heavens how it was raised up and do they not look and contemplate concerning the mountains and how they are firmly pegged in the earth and do they not look at the earth itself and they see how wide and expansive it is spread out. He said that some of the people gave the tafsir of the Quran, they said about the tafsir of this ayat that is talking about a man who when he leaves his house and he gets on a camel, as he rides that camel, he should look at that camel and consider where did it come from and what is it doing? Also, as he's traveling, he looks up into the sky and he has to consider when he looks up in the sky, who put that sky up there and all of the beauty of the sky and what's going on. And also those mountains, when he looked to the right and he looked to the left and he see all of those mountains around him, he has to consider where did all of this come from? And lastly, when he's traveling and he's walking and he looks below his feet and he sees the earth, he has to ask himself about all of the ayat that are contained therein. وقد كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يربي أصحابه على أن يستفيدوا مما يرون ومما يسمعون إن كان خيرا لزموه وإن كان شرا اجتنبوه. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم used to give تربية and used to educate and develop his companions. May Allah be pleased with them. And he used to teach them to listen and to look at what's going on. Those things that they hear that are beneficial and those things that they see that are beneficial, he used to encourage them and he used to teach them to bring those benefits to themselves to get benefit from it. سأذكر لكم في هذا في هذه المحاضرة أشياء نراها في حياتنا شيء نراه في كل يوم. I'm going to mention to some of you people in this محاضرة right now. Some of the things that are going on that we see in there around us that we need to be pondering and reflecting on. Things that happen and we see them every month. And some of those things they happen once in a year or more than once in a year. And these things that we're going to mention today, whenever we see them or we hear them, it is a responsibility that we have that we should consider them and we should ponder over them and reflect 
on these things. We're going to begin with some things that we see in our own lives. the Sheikh said, for an example, the moon itself, the Qamr, the moon that we see. He said, when this moon after half of the month is complete and it is a complete full moon, we found and we saw that the poets, the Shu'ara, they used to make so much poetry out of amazement from what they saw from how the moon was. The people of Al Balagha, the people, the Arabs who were gifted in eloquence and speaking and verbalizing themselves and describing things in a way that you can see these things as you, you see it as if you were actually there. They spoke about these, this moon and they described the moon in perfect detail, making tashbih, making the moon similar to other things that are around in the way of beauty. ولكن لنسمع كيف رب النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أصحابه رضي الله تعالى عنهم عند رؤية القمر مكتملا في نصف الشهر. Let's take a look at our Nabi صلى الله عليه وسلم and now he used to teach and give tarbiyah to the companions whenever the half month came and that was a full and there was a full moon. What did he do with them and what did he teach them when something like this happened? فقد جاء في الحديث أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لما رأى القمر مكتملا أشار إليه وخاطب أصحابه قائلا هل تضارون يعني يصيبكم ضرر وفي لفظ هل تضامون يصيبكم زحام في رؤية القمر ليلة البدر ليس دونه سحاب قالوا لا يا رسول الله قال كذلك ترون ربكم يوم القيامة One of these incidents is that there was a full moon so the Prophet وسلم, said to his companions and he pointed to the moon and he said, do you people see that moon? They say, yes. He said, do you see that moon and is there a barrier between you and that moon, a barrier that is preventing you from seeing it with clarity and with precision? Are there any clouds or anything that prevents you from seeing the moon? They said, no. No, Rasulullah, we can see the moon, it's clear. He told them, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, verily, you're going to see your Lord with the same clarity. The Sheikh said, well, based upon this incident that happened and transpired with the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whenever we see the moon and it is halfway through the month and the moon is full, what we should do is we should think at that moment when we see the moon and be reminded of the aqidah of the people, Ahl al-Sunnah wal Jama'ah. And what's going to happen Yawm al-Qiyamah based upon what the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to his companions about that moon. The aqidah that the Prophet was upon, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his companions and the righteous people from this ummah. And that is that the believers who enter into the Jannah, they are going to see their Lord, Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And then the Shaykh made dua, that Allah Ta'ala causes all of us to see the face of Allah Yawm Al-Qiyamah. Another thing we see in our life is how the mothers, the many mothers, the shafaqa, the mercy, the care, the gentleness and the concern that mothers have for their children. She cares about her child more than she cares about her own self. If the child is sad, she becomes sad because of his sorrow. If the child is hurting, 
she hurts because of his pain. If the child becomes sick, she pays attention to that sickness and she becomes sick because of the sickness of the child. This is an issue that we see and we witness wallahi in our own houses. In our own houses we see our wives and our, the mothers of our children doing this. كيف وظف النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم هذا المنظر لما رأى امرأة تضم, تضم صبيا لها إلى صدرها قال لأصحابه هل ترون هذه المرأة طارحة ولدها في النار قالوا معاذ الله قال الله بعباده أرحم من هذه بولدها He says so let's take a look at what the prophet did in a situation like this صلى الله عليه وسلم There was a lady She had a baby And she pulled the baby close to her bosom and she was protective and concerned and taking care of the baby. The Prophet said to the companion, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Radiallahu Anhum, you see that lady, that mother of that child? Can you imagine that that mother would throw her kid into the fire? They said, La Ya Rasulullah, it would never happen because of the care and concern that she was showing for the baby. The Prophet told them, Verily, Allah, Allah is more merciful to his servants than that lady. He's more merciful to his servants than that lady. So if she wouldn't throw the baby in the fire, Allah doesn't want to do that. الأمر الثالث قد ترى شخصا لا تقبله نفسك فتبغضه. The Sheikh said another situation is you may find a person. You just don't get along with him. Your nafs just doesn't get along with him. You don't like him. And you may just not want to be in his presence and just get away from him. You may even be one of those people who you talk in a condescending and a negative way on him, talk down on him or her, and you give tazki and you think yourself better than that person. And if you do that, you have fallen in something that is against the sharia of Islam. You praised yourself. And you look down on someone else. And it was better for you, more appropriate, for you to have a good opinion about the Muslims. The Sheikh said, if you did something like this, this happened to you, then what you should do is, you should be quick to make dua for that individual. Make dua for them and ask Allah to forgive yourself. إما بمصيبة أو قد وقع في منكر فإياك والسخرية وإياك والضحك فإن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قد أدبنا أن نقول الحمد لله الذي عافانا مما ابتلاه به وفضلنا على كثير ممن خلق تفضيلا Another issue that we see and we experience is an individual who has an ibtila he's been put to some trial or tribulation some fitna he's been tried he may be a person who has been afflicted with a musiba, catastrophe happened to him. Or he may be an individual that's doing something bad. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us when we see something like that, then we should say all praises are due to Allah who has honored me and raised me above many of the people that he has created and he did it in tafdila. مرة كان أحد الناس يقرأ أسئلة على سماحة الشيخ بن باز. One time there was a person who was reading some some questions to a Sheikh bin Baz. رحمة الله عليه. فذكر السائل في سؤاله أو قرأ القارئ في السؤال حركات ممثلة فضحك الناس إلا أن الشيخ بن باز ذرفت عينه وبكى ودعا بالتوفيق. So when the person who was reading these questions to the Sheikh in the question there was a question where someone had mentioned, can we get this shabab over there under control, put him in the back, something like that. May Allah bless them, bless their parents. When they were reading the question to a Sheikh Ibn Baz, they had mentioned there was an actress, some actress. They started saying the actress, she does this, she does that, that. And then the people in the audience started laughing at that actress. 
The Sheikh said the Sheikh Baz lowered his head and he started crying. وعلينا جميعا إذا رأينا في هذه في الشوارع رأينا أناسا قد عبثوا بأنفسهم وشوهوا خلقهم علينا أن لا نسخر وأن لا نضحك وأن نحمد الله العافية. So this shows us that if we happen to be in the street, in the public, and we see certain people, the way they're behaving, the way they're acting, they did certain things about how they look and their appearance, we shouldn't laugh at these people. What we should do is we should thank Allah for the good that we're on and make dua for them. Because the one who has tried them with whatever is going on with them, he's capable and able of doing the same thing to one of us. الأمر الخامس أو السادس إذا رأيت مريضا أو دخلت على مريض فبعث في نفسه التفاؤل وإياك والتقنيط. The Sheikh said another one, point number five or six is if you went into the presence of a person who is sick and you see that he is sick, then it's your job, your responsibility to make that person think positively, put in his mind and her mind a thing where they're going to think positive and not negative. Because when we make people look at their sickness and their condition and situation in an optimistic way, that mentality can be more beneficial than the medicine itself to make them feel optimistic. دخل الإمام سحنون أحد أئمة المالكية عليهم رحمة الله على مريض يدعى بابن القصار وكان هذا المريض خائفا قلقا من الموت يخشى مما بعد الموت فقال له سحنون مما تخاف قال أخشى من الموت وما بعد الموت There's one of the great scholars of the Maliki Madhab, Al-Imam Sahyun Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Alihi. He went in and he went to visit someone who was sick. And the one who was sick, he had trepidation and he was nervous and he was upset. The Imam Sahyun said to him, what, what's the matter? What's the problem? He said, I'm afraid of what's going to happen to me if and when I die. What's going to happen afterwards? فقال له سحنون أتشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له. The Imam Suhyun said to him, Do you bear witness there's no God worthy of worship except Allah and His Muhammad is His Messenger? قال نعم. He said yes, I do. وتشهد أن محمد الرسول الله خاتم الأنبياء لا نبي بعده. Do you believe and bear witness Muhammad is the last Nabi? He's the Messenger of Allah. No Nabi is coming after him. قال نعم. He said yes. قال وتحب الصحابة كلهم. Do you like or love all of the companions? وتحب عائشة والشيخين. Do you love Aisha and Abu Bakr and Umar? ولا ترى السيف على المسلمين. And you don't believe that you can kill and fight the Muslims? وأن الجنة حق وأن النار حق. Do you believe that paradise is true and the hellfire is true? قال نعم. He said, Yeah, I believe in all that. وأن عيسى كلمة الله ألقاها إلى مريم وروح من ليس ولد لله. Do you believe that Isa ibn Maryam is the word from Allah that was given to Mary? and he is the spirit from Allah Azzawajal, and he is not the son of Allah? He said, yes. He said, go ahead and die. Die. Because you are in a good way. Because the one who dies, and this is his situation, he dies on good. We ask Allah to cause all of us to die with the pure tawheed. And to bring us all together in the Jannah, Naeem. الأمر السابع إذا رأيت شيئا عظيما إما مبنى وإما طائرة وإما باخرة وتعاظمت ضخامته فتذكر أن الله خالقه وخالق من صنعه. The Sheikh said if you were to see something that was amazing or magnificent or mind blowing in the creation like an airplane like a big building, massive building, like a big, massive ship, and you're impressed with that, you say you should remember Allah Azza wa is the one who created all of that and think about the greatness of Allah. 
فكل شيء مخلوق فالله خالقه صنع الله الذي اتقن كل شيء everything that has been created Allah is the one who created it. He is the one who has manufactured and created everything in existence. So whenever you see these issues, these things, and you marvel at it, you just have to remember that because in reality you're marveling at the one who is the creator of those particular things and that will increase you in awareness and increase you in uh, God consciousness. ثم تذكروا هذه الناطحات إذا صعدنا في الطائرة ثم رأيناها في الأسفل رأيناها كأنها أعواد ثقاب صغيرة. The Sheikh said another thing is when one of us gets in an airplane and we go high in the air and you look down, you see below the airplane that's all the way in the sky, all of these things that are on the ground, they look minuscule and miniature from way up there. So the question is, these, all of these creations, well, if you were to compare them to how wide and massive and expansive the earth is, they're going to be a little. عند كوكب المشتري كبيضة عند سلة بيض. The scholars, the scientists, the people of astronomy, those people who study the galaxies and the celestial bodies, they said that certain planets, certain planets that are out in the world, that the Earth itself is only like an egg, the size of an egg to us. If you were to compare the Earth to some of those planets. وأن كوكب المشتري عند الشمس and some other kind of planet, if you were to compare it to the sun itself, it's like the size of an egg to us, showing how big the sun is. And also the sun itself, how big the sun is. He said that the sun that we know of compared to some of these galaxies is just like an atom, an atom, an atom, A-T-O-M, of what we know. وكل هذه المجرات والكواكب تحت قبة السماء العظيمة. And all of these, all of these are stars, all of these planets, they are under the canopy of the celestial bodies. والله تعالى فوقها وخالقها. And Allah is over and above all of that, and He's the one who created all of that. وما قدر الله حق قدره والأرض جميعا قبضته يوم القيامة والسماوات مطويات بيمينه. Allah said in the Quran. And they did not consider Allah the way he should have been considered. And the earth will be folded up Yom al Qiyamah, and the, and the heavens will be folded up Yom al Qiyamah, and the earth will be in his right hand. SubhanAllah, SubhanAllah, how they make partners with him. Al-Amr al-Thamin, hadihi al-Taqniya al-Makru'ati wal-Masmu'ati wal-Mar'iya. The eighth point is connected to the technology that we are aware of today. Some of the technology that we have it has programs and able to store information in those programs that if one of us had been given the life span of the messenger Nuh salawatullah wassalamu alayhi, never would you be able to encompass all of that information. And a lot of this information that is in the books, you know, all of the information in these books, some of them are lost. There are millions, millions of different issues like this. All of this information of what has passed and what is going to come, this stuff, is, we don't, we're just scratching the surface. And as, as Allah said, you people have not been given from knowledge except a little bit. 
وفوق كل ذي علم عليم. And look at all of those scholars and what they have done, the scientists who put these programs together, all this technology. They have all of that knowledge and all those efforts. But Allah said, and above everybody who has knowledge, there's someone who's more knowledgeable than him. Point is, if you find yourself impressed by all of this technology, no problem. But what you should do is remember to praise and to glorify the one who created all of that. أيضا من الأمثلة التي نراها في حياتنا إذا رأيت تصرفا خاطئا من أحد فتلطف بإصلاح ذلك الخطأ إن كنت قادرا. Sheikh said another thing that we see and we witness is sometimes we see people who misbehave. They do certain things that are not acceptable. The Sheikh said what we should do is deal with that person with lutf. Easiness and gentleness in rectifying the issue. Especially as it relates to the person who's making mistakes in his aqidah and the ibadah that he's doing. Because the Prophet himself, sallallahu wasallam, he used to see things that were wrong many times and he would rectify it and correct it. سمع رجلا يحلف بالكعبة فقال من كان حالفا فليحلف برب الكعبة. For an example, he heard a man swearing, and instead of saying "Wallahi," the man said, "I swear by the Kaaba." The Prophet said, "Sallallahu alaihi wasallam," and rectify and correct him. Anyone who's going to swear, then only swear by Allah. وسمع رجالا يحلفون بآبائهم فقال إن الله ينهاكم أن تحلفوا بآبائكم. There were a group of people who were swearing by their fathers. We swear by our fathers. Rasulullah said, "Verily, Allah prohibited you people from swearing by your fathers." وسمع جارية تقول في نشيدها وفينا نبي يعلم ما في الغد فقال لا يعلم ما في الغد إلا الله. He heard a young girl saying. With us in our presence, we have a Nabi who knows what's going to happen tomorrow. When he heard that, he rectified it. Corrected, said, "No, don't say that. No one knows what's going to happen tomorrow except Allah." وسمع آخر يقول ما شاء الله وشئت فقال قل بل ما شاء الله وحده جعلتني الله ندا. So from these many incidents, a man said to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, "Ma sha Allah." Was shit. It is as Allah wanted, Ya Rasulullah, and you. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told him, don't say that. Are you making Allah partners, making me a partner with Allah? Just say, mashallah, by himself. He saw a man who made wudu, but he didn't make the proper wudu to cover all of his body. So when he saw this, he said, go back and make a better wudu. ورأى شخصا صلى فلم يحسن الصلاة فقال رجع فصلي فإنك لم تصل. He saw a man who prayed but he didn't pray in a disciplined way in a good way. He told that man go back and repeat your prayer because you didn't pray. وهذه التصويبات هي أعظم من هدايا المال لمن أخطأ. The Sheikh said this correction from the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم it is from the best things that the person can give to the one who is in a position to make a mistake. فإذا رأيت من أخطأ فإياك والتسويف وبادر ففي ذلك خير لك وله. So if you see someone making a mistake, then beware of procrastinating, but instead be quick to go and try to help and rectify the mistake. أيضا مما نراه في حياتنا الصغار إذا رأيت الصغير أحسن. فبادر بتشجيعه والدعاء له وإذا رأيته أساء فبادر بالتلطف في بيان خطأه. Another issue that we actually see in our lives is with the youngsters. The youngster, you may see him doing something that is a mistake. So what we have to do is we have to be quick to go to try to rectify the mistake, but rectify the mistake in an easy and gentle way for him. لأن الصغيرة إذا تلقنا بنا حياته على ما سمع. And that's because the young person, if he hears that which will benefit him, inshallah, he'll build his life upon that. وقد سمعت بعض أهل العلم يقول أنا أصلي منذ خمسين سنة تقريبا لأن معلما أو إماما علمنا الصلاة تطبيقا عملي ونحن صغار. The Sheikh said that he heard 
someone from the people of knowledge say, I've been praying for the last 50 years. And the reason why I've been praying is because I was inspired when I was young by an imam or a teacher who took the time out to teach and to advise. ولهذا كان من عناية النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام بالصغار أن أحد الصحابة الصغار جاء وأدخل يده صحفة فقال عليه الصلاة والسلام يا غلام سم الله وكل بيمينك وكل مما يليك فهذه آداب ثلاثة في جملة واحدة From these examples with the youngsters who make mistakes is what happened when the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was eating with that young boy and his hand was going all over the place. He said to him, hey, young boy, ya gulam, hey, young man, say bismillah before you eat. And eat from what is directly in front of you and eat with your right hand. Those are three things that he informed the boy and taught the boy at one time. Akhiran, <laughs> sa'adhkur ashya'a nasma'uha fi hayatina وتمر علينا دون اعتبار. Finally, إخواني, Sheikh said, I'm going to mention something lastly about something that happens in our life and we see it, but we don't really pay attention to it and we don't consider it and we should. سأذكرها سريعة ثم أختم المحاضرة. I'm going to mention these things very quickly and then we'll be finished with the lecture. أولا إذا سمعت قارئ القرآن فأنصت له لقوله تعالى. وإذا قرئ القرآن فاستمع له وأنصت وألك ترحمه. First thing, if you hear a person reciting the Quran, then give it your ear and listen to it, because of the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal. And if you hear the Quran being recited, then be quiet and pay attention to it. ثانيا إذا سمعت صوت المؤذن فتابع فالعمل يسير والأجر جزيل. Secondly. If you hear the mu'adhan making the adhan, then repeat what the mu'adhan said because in doing so, the action of repeating is small, insignificant, easy, but the reward for doing so is tremendous. For an example, from the benefit of repeating what the imam said is that the one who repeats what the mu'adhan said he will get the shifa'a, the intercession of the Prophet Sallallahu And the companions and those who came after them, they used to have a lot of hirs, paying attention and following and saying what the mu'adhan said, they paid attention to it. To the point where a scholar by the name of Ibn Juraj, he said that the people of the past used to listen to the mu'adhan and the adhan with the same concentration and consideration that they used to listen to one who was reciting the Quran. But that reason, a Sheikh Ibn Baz, rahmatullahi alayhi, he said, the person who hears the adhan and he doesn't repeat, doesn't pay attention to it, he is mahroom. Mahroom means it is haram for him getting good. He's been put out of the box, outside of the realm of getting good because it's a simple issue to do and a lot of rewards and he doesn't do it. Thalithan, idha samihta sawta al-riyah, fas'alillaha khayraha, وَخَيْرَ مَا أُرْسِلَتْ بِهِ وَاسْتَعِذْ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ شَرِّهَا وَشَرِّ مَا أُرْسِلَتْ بِهِ Third thing that happens is that if you hear the voice of the wind, you hear the wind, then when that happens, you should ask Allah Ta'ala for the good of it, the good that is inside of it, and the good that it has been sent with. And you should seek refuge in Allah from the evil of it, and the evil that is inside of it. And the evil that has been sent with it. Rabi'an, إذا سمعت صوت المطر فعليك بالأذكار النبوية اللهم صيبا نافعا اللهم صيبا هنيئا مطرنا بفضل الله ورحمته. If you hear the rain, you see the rain, then you should say the du'a and the dhikr for that. Oh Allah, give us the rain and make it a beneficial rain. Oh Allah, bring the rain to us and cause it to be a source of 
good for us. خامسا إذا سمعت صوت الرعد فقل سبحان الذي يسبح الرعد بحمده والملائكة من خفته كما ثبت ذلك عن عبد الله بن الزبير رضي الله تعالى عنهما. If you hear the thunder, there is a ذكر that we're supposed to say, like the hadith of Abdullah bin Zubair, may Allah be pleased with both of them. The ayat of the Quran, if the Prophet heard the thunder, he would, be, he would say, all, all of the glory unto Allah, that everything makes glory unto him. And from that, the malaika who are afraid of his punishment when they hear that thunder. سادسا إذا سمعت صوت الديكة فاسأل الله من فضله فإنها رأت ملكة. If you hear the sound of the rooster when he makes that sound, then ask Allah for his virtues because that rooster has seen a, an angel. أتذكر أن مرة دعيت إلى وليمة عشاء. وكان فيها سماحة الشيخ بن باز رحمه الله تعالى. الشيخ said I remember one time I was invited to have dinner one time and at that dinner a sheikh ibn Baz he was there رحمة الله عليه. وكان الداعي رجلا وجيها. And the person who invited me he was a good person a good man. وكان هذا قبل ظهور الجوالات قبل ظهور هذه الأجهزة. And that dawah, that invitation, happened before we had these mobile phones a long time ago. فقال صاحب الدعوة بأنه أهدي إليه قلم فيه ساعة إذا وضع الساعة على وقت الفجر خرج فيها صوت ديك. Way back then, the guy who had invited the sheikh to the dinner, he had a pen, and inside of the pen. There was a clock, and whenever the clock went off for Fajr prayer, it would the alarm would be the voice of a rooster. وأنا أذكر هذه القصة لدعابة الشيخ عبد العزيز بن باز وفراسته. The Sheikh said the reason why I'm re- mentioning this to you is because of a Sheikh Abd al-Aziz bin Baz and his intuition and insight and the way he used to joke with people and have that light sense of humor. فهذا الرجل أعطى الشيخ القلم فأخذ الشيخ بن باز يقلبه ويتحسسه فقال الشيخ هذه صناعة اليابان. So the sheikh who was blind, he took the pen from the man that made the sound of the rooster at fajr time and he started filling it and observing it and then he said to the man, this has been made by the Japanese. فأحد الحاضرين تسرع وقال بل صناعة أمريكا. One of the people were there. He shouted out and said, "No, the Americans made this pen." والقلم أخذ يدور علينا واحدا واحدا. So they started passing the pen around. فلما وصل إلي. When the pen finally reached the sheikh. مكتوب عليه made in Japan. It was written on the pen made in Japan. فقلت للشيخ عبد العزيز. كيف عرفت أنه من صناعة اليابان؟ The Sheikh said to Sheikh Abdul Aziz, How did you know this pen was made in Japan? فقال الشيخ وهو يتبسم اليابان يحبون الأشياء الدقيقة والأمريكان يحبون الأشياء الكبيرة. <laughs> the Sheikh said because the Japanese are a group of people who like small things that are compact, and the Americans they like things that are humongous and large. طيب أعود إلى ماذا نسمع في ما إذا ماذا نسمع في حياتنا؟ We'll go back now to dealing with what about the things that we hear. الأمر السابع إذا سمعتم نباح الكلاب فتعوذوا بالله من الشيطان فإنها رأت شيطانا. If you hear a dog barking, then you should seek refuge in Allah from the evil of the shaytan because the dog saw a devil. الثامن إذا سمعتم نهيق الحمير أيضا. فتعوذوا بالله فإنها رأت شيطانا. Also the donkey. If you hear the brain of the donkey and the sound that the donkey makes, you should seek refuge in Allah from the shaytan because he saw a devil. الأمر التاسع قبل الأخير إذا سمعت من يغتاب الناس فتلطف في نصحه وقطع حديثه. 
Another thing that we hear quite often is that if you hear a person making riba and backbiting other people, then you should talk to him and give him advice in an easy way, in a gentle way. Stop him from doing that. الأمر الأخير إذا سمعت فوائد علمية فبادر بالعمل بها وبنقلها إلى أهل بيتك وجيرانك وأصحابك. The last advice, if you hear knowledge, beneficial knowledge, listen to it, take it, record it, and then be quick to go back to your family and share it with your family, teach and educate your family. شكر الله لكم. والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. May Allah Azza wa Jal be grateful to all of you. The Sheikh made that du'a. وأكرر أيها الكرام المال زكاته ربع العشر والزرع زكاته وآتوا حقه يوم حصاده وزكاة العلم العمل به وتبليغه الآخرين. The Sheikh was saying about the zakat when you have your money. You have to give zakat of your money, take a portion of your money and give it in zakat so that you can purify the money that stays with you. And the way that you purify knowledge is, the zakat of knowledge is you have to take what you hear and go and share it, share it with people. The Sheikh said, as we always do at the end of all of our lectures, I'm going to ask three questions, inshallah, and then we'll be done with this. The Sheikh said, I mentioned ten things that we see in our lives, ten things during this lecture. Okay. Can somebody remind me of two things? Little man, right there. Al Hamir, Sot Al Hamir. Go ahead, my man. And what's the dog? Wa Sot Al Kalb. Taif, ta, ta. Sheikh said, "Come, come up." طيب أنا ذكرت في كلامي رؤية القمر وذكرت عقيدة عند رؤية القمر فما يذكرها لنا؟ The Sheikh said that he mentioned about the moon and about the aqidah of the people that's correct concerning the moon. Who knows the answer? And what I want to say is, let the youngsters let the youngsters do it so that they can get some of this money right here. ترجم يا شيخ إذا تكلم بكلام وأنا لا أفهم فهذا من تناجي الجماعة دون الواحد. So come on you youngsters, what did the sheikh mention concerning the aqidah of the people of Islam when you see the full moon? What did he mention for some of the youngsters? لا قبلها يا أبو سامة ماذا قلت لهم؟ قتل الكبار أترك المجال للصغار هؤلاء حتى يحصلوا على النقود. جزاك الله خيرا. شوف هذا الشيخ. أين الصغير؟ هاري هاري كم 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 close man. Speak up loud like a man like a man so we can hear you. Go ahead. Say it again. Just because you came, you're going to get a reward. When I can know Sheikh Vekar al Haq. Good job, good job, son. Good job. Good job. Bye. هذا الصغير هذا إذا سمعنا القرآن ماذا نفعل؟ If you if you hear the Quran if you hear the Quran what should we do if you hear the Quran you should what can't hear you little man عليك أن تستمع إليه 
Good job, good job, good job. Shukran lakum, wassalamu alaikum wa